This video is uh, the solutions for the compound angle formulas homework sheet. Uh, this is the first of two sheets. Uh, before you start doing this, uh, the questions on this sheet, you should really memorize the compound angle formulas. It would be very beneficial. Okay, so let's try them. So the first question, I have to simplify or have to um, express as a single trig function. So when you look at the question, you need to know which identity or which compound angle formula to use. So uh, 1a, I'm going to use the addition formula for sine. Uh, and now you have to just figure out what sine of pi over 2 is. But that's easy. That's one of your special angles. b, uh, if you look at what's given to you, you can express it as a single trig function using the addition formula for cosine. For c, you can express it as a single trig function using the subtraction formula for sine. For d, you can express it as a single trig function using the subtraction formula for cosine. So I know which formula to use because I have my formulas memorized. Uh, and then the special angle part, that's, that's, in the pre that's uh, from your knowledge on the previous lesson. Okay, so for number two, I must admit it's a little silly because they want us to use the compound angle formula and then uh, find the exact value. So actually for 2a and 2b, it's not that silly, okay? Uh, but for 2c, it is definitely uh, a silly thing to use the compound angle formula, and I'll explain why that's the case. Uh, but anyways, for 2a, use the subtraction formula for cosine and then find the exact value for each of these angles. So uh, through cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2, and then so forth and so on, and then do the calculation. Uh, same thing can be said for b, but for 2b, you have to use a subtraction formula for sine uh, instead of the subtraction formula for cosine. Uh, four ratios, uh, watch the signs, be careful, and then just uh, evaluate. So it's pretty silly to use the compound angle formula for uh, 2c because 5 pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 3, if you do the math, is 13 pi over 6. Now 13 pi over 6 is coterminal to pi over 6. Uh, okay, these two are coterminal. Which means their terminal arms are in the exact same location, which means cos of 13 pi over 6 is equivalent to cos of pi over 6. And cos of pi over 6, everybody should know what cos of pi over 6 is. That's quadrant 1 special angle root 3 over 2. So this question, it's pretty silly to apply the compound angle formula because there is absolutely no need to break apart pi over 6. That's something you should really know already. Okay. So, uh, for three, you are given uh, you're given cos x is twelve over thirteen, and sine y is seven over twenty five, and they ask you for sine x first. So I didn't do the um, um, x squared plus y squared goes r squared because I know the five twelve thirteen Pythagorean triple. So right away, if cos x is twelve over thirteen, then sine x must be five over thirteen. And it's positive because it, I was told that angle x is in the first quadrant. Now cos y, I also didn't show you using the x squared plus y squared goes r squared because I know this is a 7, 24, 25 Pythagorean triple. Now this one's negative because they told me that y is located in the second quadrant. Okay, so I use addition formula for sine to do part c. Um, because I know what sine x cos y sine y cos x is. So I know the four ratios and I just evaluate. So I did the same thing for d, but instead I'm going to use a subtraction formula for sine. For e, I'm using the addition formula for cosine. And for f, I'm using the subtraction formula for cosine. Okay, for 4a, I'm breaking apart 11 pi over 12. Um, there are infinite ways of breaking it apart, but I would argue that one of the easier ways to do it is breaking it apart to 
3 pi over 12 plus 8 pi over 12. Uh, there's, I break it down to special angles, and then I use addition formula for sine, and find out the ratios, and I'm done. For 4b, I didn't want, I really didn't want to work for 25 pi over 12, because if you think about 25 pi over 12, that angle is coterminal to pi over 12. So remember what I said, if the angle is really big, you can break it apart, but then it's more tedious because later uh, when you try to find the ratios, you have to think, you have to, is a positive, is a negative, is a positive, is a negative. And if the angles get really, really large, it's going to be hard to know whether it's in the quadrant, the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So you can always make it, make a big angle and change it into a smaller angle because you you work with equivalent trig expressions. So if you're very comfortable with different expressions being equivalent, different trig expressions being equivalent, then why not? Why not make the angle smaller? So that's what I did. I took 25 pi over 12 and I subtracted it by two pi. Break apart pi over 12, very easy because it's a very small angle. And then I use the subtraction from formula for cosine Everything is quadrant one, very nice, very straightforward. Positive ratios all the way through and simplify. Okay, for the last question, they tell me what cos B is. They tell me cos B is negative three over five. So once again, Pythagorean triple, three, four, five. So uh, they also said that angle B is in the second quadrant. So sine B is four fifths, tan B is negative four thirds. And then in part B, they asked me what's cos of 2B. Well, I could use any of the three versions of the double angle formula for cosine, but since in the question they provided me the knowledge of cos B, then I use it. To, I used the two cos squared B minus one version. Uh, for 5C, they asked me what's the exact value for sine 2B. Um, there is only one version for the double angle formula for sine, so. Uh, 2 sine b cos b, I know what sine b is, I know what cos b is, simplify. Now tan 2b for, for 5d, I chose to use the quotient identity, but you could have used a double angle formula for tan if you wanted. So 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared x, uh, which is very easy to do because you know what tan b, sorry, I should say uh, tan 2b is 2 tan b over one minus tan squared b. And that's very easy to find out uh, the exact answer for because I know what tan b is, it's negative four thirds. But I would argue this calculation, what I've shown here using the, the quotient identity is much easier. But you can only use this technique or this strategy if you know what sine 2b and cos 2b is. So if I didn't do part b or part c, well, part b and part c, then I, I can't uh, do part d this way. So cos b is negative 3 fifths. And I can find you the angle of b by uh, taking the inverse cosine of negative 3, 3 fifths. Now make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Um, now what if I didn't use cos b? What if I chose tan b instead? So tan b is negative 4 thirds. So I'm going to do inverse tan of negative 4 thirds. Okay. Now, this is not the correct answer. Negative 0.927 is not in the second quadrant. How do I know that? Because a negative angle means I'm rotating clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise. So if I rotate, so what I need to do is manipulate this answer. So there's few do it, but I'm gonna just add this by pi there, 2.21. That's my quadrant two answer. Because a quadrant two answer and a quadrant four answer generates a ratio of negative four thirds for tan. So you've got to be careful uh, what your calculator tells you. It, you might have to do some manipulation. Uh, you could have chose to use sine, by the way. You could have took the inverse sine of four fifths, but that will give you a quadrant one answer and you have to find the quadrant two answer. Uh, the last one is asking me where is 2b located? Since tan 2b is negative, so, sorry, tan 2b is positive, sine 2b is negative, cos 2b is negative as well, then I must be in quadrant b. 2b must be in quadrant, re, quadrant 3 based on the cast rule. 
Okay, so there's your uh, first homework sheet for compound angle formulas.